Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. Which, what are we about? What are we doing? Uh, this is a, he's got a gun bill. He's like yeah, to, have to get into bill. AGS, the only way I can get my gun bills passed. Not, I wouldn't count on it. Yeah, <laughs> not going to happen. Are you oh, you've got a bunch of gun haters in here, Robert. Oh, yeah, and yeah. Well, uh, I don't know if they hate freedom. They them. hate freedom. <laughs> wow, you're starting. Yeah. <laughs> you're starting by the eight ball there. You want us to look at this bill? Exactly, yeah. Uh, Thank wow. you very much. We know a lot. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I have, I have a. Oh, actually, in, in okay, Michael actually brought large print. I know you're getting a little Are, older, is this, Chris. Is this another? I don't need readers. Well, Are we have a hemp bill on seeds. Okay, so this is a separate bill. Yeah, no. this is just an amendment. This is an amendment another, to that bill that he wanted to present to another us. Another issue. And these are both on your web page, by the way. Yeah, you computer guys have got it on your web page. The. Uh, but um, so I figured if we weren't, um, we had a cancellation we may as well hear what he wanted to do. Um, and because the seed bill, the seed bill, uh, the hemp seed bill, we'll probably be getting that out of here shortly if there's not a lot of opposition. And, Nope. And this would blend in with it. So you want to welcome the Ag Committee. Thank you. Senator. Thank you, Senator Stark and Committee Senator Rogers for the record. Um, this proposal would move the allowed uh, Delta 9 THC in hemp, uh, which is now 0.3%, to go to 1% and put it in state statute. Um, this is something that I've been advocating for for some time, both here in the State House and with our federal delegation, and have talked with um, state legislators around the country uh, about this issue. It's something that's uh, a problem in all the hemp states, and now we're even more worried with the USDA's proposed rules around hemp. They've got some real crazy and restrictive stuff uh, in it. And I think if we and other states get out in front and say this is how hemp should be defined, that we have more of a chance pushing the feds to redefine it exactly like this. Um, Vermont has probably had more investment uh, in this single hemp industry than any other single industry in generations. I, I personally, in the past year, uh, invested about three quarters of a million dollars between equipment and property to grow the hemp on. I know some of the uh, processors have invested four and five million dollars in processing plants. A lot of the processors who have been set up uh, for some time, some of the early entries into the market are investing in bigger machinery because as you've probably heard, so many people got into growing hemp this year that there's a glut of biomass on the market. Processors can't keep up, therefore farmers are sitting on hemp. Um, so what happens with the majority of the strains of hemp? Similar to an apple. If you uh, pick the apple two or three weeks early, it's not quite as big and it's not quite as sweet. And with the hemp, a lot of times for your high CBD containing strains to reach their maximum CBD or close to it, you have to let them go full term. And what happens in many of those strains as they get closer to full term along with the CBD level going up, the THC level goes up as well. And there's a lot of strains that will still go over the 0.3%. So if you have to pull those strains before they hit the point three, you're losing two things. You're losing content. Your content might be 8% CBD, and if you let it go full term, it might hit 12 or 13. But you're also losing volume because that's when the flowers are putting on weight. In those last few weeks, they, they might add, you know, 10 to as much as 40 or 50 percent in weight so it's a huge deal to anybody that's growing hemp especially when the wholesale biomass market has dropped from over a hundred dollars a pound last year down to about 40 or 50 
dollars a pound this year and may continue to decline. Um, so this is a what I see as a, a simple way to deal with the problem of our farmers being able to grow good strains. When you turned it into a manufactured product, it would still have to meet the federal definition. So it what happens? Be what? The what point three. Saying? The point three. But with all the products that people make with hemp, you're adding other things. Like for topicals, you're adding different kinds of oils and, and maybe shea butter, coconut oil, sunflower oil, and this dilutes it down so that there's very literally trace amounts of THC by the time you've made the product. So you could still use the 1% and product yep. to dilute down, yep. and so it would be all underneath the it, point. It would three. still hit federal compliance. And the other thing that a lot of folks are able to do is um, separate out the THC. There are products and processes that can take whatever the level of THC right out. I actually just had some isolate made, which is only CBD. It doesn't have the other compounds in it. Chris? Do, do you have, or maybe Michael can answer, as I understand it, we continue to operate our hemp program under a pilot sort mm -hmm. of permission. And um, does changing a definition in the middle of our pilot give us, jeopardize that? Or uh, We like being in the pilot mm -hmm. zone. Yes. And so I'm wondering if there's a, a concern or... I'll give you my perception and then let Michael give you the right answer. My perception <laughs> is that because we do it in statute, it doesn't affect our program and we're operating under an approved program, but Michael may have a different view. So first we operate under the pilot until October 31st. Yeah, and so it, this would only affect the pilot from the effective date until October 31st. One season. Um, it's the pilot is under the 2014 um, farm bill, and that does define hemp as 0.3 THC on the dry weight basis. I think really the question is, would the USDOJ enforce uh, against us um, between the effective date and October 31st? Um, because effectively they'd be enforcing marijuana and cultivation, and, and I, I don't know. I, I would want to look at that letter from DOJ from a year, few years back about marijuana enforcement. Um, so that that is what I, I I I don't really know because it would be about enforcement of marijuana. Is there is there uh, thought of making this effective November 1st for that, you know, to get same, by the same same issue, I guess, but that protects our pilot, clearly, but I, I don't know. I'm open to anything. So um, then it's about the you uh, getting approval of next year's hemp cultivation under the USDA approval process under the draft, no, it's not draft anymore, under the interim USDA rule. And that defines hemp as 0.3 THC on a dry weight basis with a margin of safety. What, when does that uh, 0.3 kick in though? At harvest time, at product time, I mean, it, it sounds to me, according to John, that well, yeah. it depends on what you do with that product. Right, but the way the federal legislation is right now, it's 0.3 at any time. It can never go above it. And the big, there are several problems, but the big problem is that test was originally designed by testing leaf and matter from the bottom of the plant. And now the feds have said, no, that's not how we want you to test it. We want you to take the top bud, which is the strongest. The stuff down on the bottom is the weakest. So they want to test the strongest stuff and take all the THC in it. And in most strains, that puts you over. Or if you tested it the way the test was originally designed, and it's all described in a scientific paper, as I understand, 
that a lot of these plants would pass because if you mix the weak stuff with the strong stuff, it of course brings the, the strong stuff down. So you mentioned that um, the product would still have to meet the 0.3 federal definition, mm -hmm. but this draft changes the definition of hemp products and gets rid of the with the federally defined THC concentrate level for hemp. So, Michael, wouldn't that? I, 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 I Senator Hardy, you're right. If that was Senator Rogers' intent, I, I did not do it properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and and you know this, I never get too hung up on a draft because they always get changed. That was not my intent to include the products. Um, my intent is to protect the farmer, and you know. Uh, there are several avenues we could take. If the, if the committee is, is skeptical of bucking the feds on this, maybe the committee, I could work with the committee and we do a letter to the federal delegation or something, but there, there, needs, there needs to be a change and I think the states need, to, the hemp states need to try to band together and, and push the feds because what the USDA is doing at the federal level right now <clears throat> puts all the hemp programs at risk. And all that, all that investment, I mean, I did, and I know tons of other, this is my personal story, but I know tons of other people did it too. I just made a giant investment based on the 2014 Farm Bill and the, in the pilot program. And if they pull out the rug out from under me and all these other people who've invested all this money and it's part of their business plan on how they're going to pay back, literally across the state, mil tens of millions, probably hundreds of millions of dollars that's been invested, uh, you're gonna have a lot of people hurting. And so I'm, I'm trying to figure out a way, can we as a state buck the system and get it, and will they let us get away with it? Because so far they've been kind of hands off on all the state programs, right? They've said, well, we're not going to enforce the marijuana laws on recreational marijuana. We're going to leave the states to do it. And so there's a chance that they might say the same thing on this. I'm just trying to figure out how do we, as a state legislature, protect the, the millions of dollars in investment in the huge influx of economic development and, and money into our systems that this hemp program has created because we've been a national leader in our hemp program and tons of people have moved here and invested here because of it and I don't want to see the rug pulled out of any out from under any of us and are, are there other dealers that are growers actually that worked with you to help put this together yeah, like an association or? there is an association um, it's kind of loose a loose coalition. There's lots of little groups, but everybody agrees uh, that we have to change the definition and everybody's been freaking out. The whole hemp community has totally freaked out since the USDA, USDA released the, the, the draft rules. Have you, uh, Michael, have you followed that stuff at USDA at all on hemp? Okay. Uh, I have. I've got the rule in my hands right now. Uh, from conversations with Carrie, he, um, the last time I talked to him about this was about a month ago, uh, he said he plans to submit the current Vermont statute and proposed hemp rule as our state program and just see what USDA does. Because our program has the ability to grow um, basically up to one, provided that the, uh, the three alternatives for disposition, you destroy your crop, or you sell it to a dispensary, or you contract with the dispensary to separate out the CBD and the THC to if get it, it to a point. goes up to right. one. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that was his, his idea to still kind of maintain the definition of hemp as 0.3 but to see if USDA will approve that authority to separate out to bring it down into that that 0.3 standard so um, so that that is that is uh, 
it's a it's a risk. It's a calculated risk. As it's this. Right. And so wouldn't we be better off not to rock <coughs> the boat too much and hopefully let try that to see if it slides through with approval rather than you know, doing this that would maybe, you know, be an insult to Well, it, that's, as, as I said, this is, this is something, this is where we as a nation need to get to. Um, if the committee thinks it's too much of a risk, I would ask, uh, is it maybe possible to get the committee to do a letter to our federal delegation and to just talk about the investment in Vermont and trying to save uh, the hemp industry in Vermont and, and that we need some changes and we're not, uh, ha I know our ag agency is not happy with the USDA rules either, so you maybe should have well, a discussion maybe, with them. Maybe uh, we would be better off, I mean, we want to protect the hemp industry, that's, you know, but maybe we'd be better off to uh, write a letter or explaining the investments that have been made here and how we've done 9,800 acres of hemp and, and do all the good stuff mm -hmm. and say, and we've done this by following our own little set of rules of, of the way Kerry is promoting and asking to do in Washington and that we support Kerry and the agency of BAG and our hemp growers in moving forward, but request this uh, to be, you know, fully um, executed or yep. thought of and analyzed. I don't know. What do you guys think? You know, sometimes you catch more flies with honey than you mm -hmm. do with vinegar. <coughs> yeah, that makes some sense. When do those rules become the rules? They are the rules right now. But those states that were under the pilot program yeah. got an additional year to operate under One year. the pilot program. So we could ask to have these, this as an extension to the rules, or what would, how would you do that? Because um, <laughs> they aren't going to cut us out and say, okay, Vermont, you can do this, but the other 40 nine states have got to do it this way. Right. Well, so far they've been approving state programs, which are all different, you know, so, variations. Oh, they are? Oh, yeah. Different? Oh, yeah. We don't all operate under the same state programs. You as a state have to send in your program and then they approve it. So we should just strongly support them continuing their practice and allowing the Vermont. states the state to run their own program. Mm -hmm. That's basically Carrie's position. Let's see if they're going to approve our program. Um, we do have that kind of pressure release valve that that is not contemplated in the USDA rule. Um, but you can make an argument the 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 USDA rule said it says needs to be 0.3 plus or including a measure of uncertainty. And that measure of uncertainty just needs to have a range that's under 0.3. So you could potentially have a, TH, uh, a hemp that tests at 0.5, but with a measure of uncertainty that says it's 0.3 to 0.57. And that would be OK under the USDA rule. Um, and so hmm. theoretically our program with uh, you can separate out or otherwise dispense with uh, the crop that's over 0.3. It's, it's similar. It's similar. It's, it's, a, it's not a measure of uncertainty, but it's a, it's a, a technique or a, a management um, mechanism to deal with what's over 0.3. The problem is this requires once it tests over 0.3 for it to be destroyed. Yeah. And, and to, <coughs> the U.S. Attorney General to be contacted and for the state to implement enforcement. Yeah, and then and the other required. thing is, uh, yeah, and all the labs would have to be DEA certified, which is another 
ridiculous step. So basically, what we would be doing by following their rules is subjecting all of our hemp farmers to being locked up and fighting legal battles if their stuff tests a little hot. So locked we, up in a cell, right? Is that what you're maintaining? It, it's a absolutely. <laughs> it's it's a crime. It's a crime. <laughs> So what we should be doing is supporting the AG's <coughs> request to be uh, licensed and approved as submitted. And not maybe not even mention the particulars. Um, I, I would want to confer with Carrie about what they are submitting as the full plan, and I'd want to um, I'd want to be careful in whatever. Right yeah. Yeah. No, and I would recommend that you guys have Kerry come in and, and make sure that he's okay with it. But I think he would be okay with the additional support of the legislature behind him. So it's not just the agency, it's this yeah. committee in the legislature that oversees this uh, section of, of our uh, law that's also saying, you know, this is what we need. Well, <coughs> is the committee agreeable to do a letter of yes. support? And we'd have asked Michael to work with Carrie and see what they've actually done. Yeah, I would love, I would I'd want like to, to hear Carrie. Yeah, and, I'd like to hear and, from Carrie and, and, and see what his, what's included in his plan before we say we support it. So yeah. there may be things in there that. Well, well, I don't think it's not getting in the seat. Yeah. Yeah. I'm very interested in us being as assertive and, and frankly pushing back on the fence as much right. as we can. But so we this, no, this new proposal yeah. is ridiculous yeah. that they want to, if you go over, they it's want a, to lock cheap. you up and bring charges against you. So to move forward, uh, we got Michael to work with Carrie mm -hmm. and start putting together his thoughts to do a letter. So we, because we're running, you know, we gotta keep this wheel turning. Exactly. And we just have 15 minutes with Terry to. Yeah. yeah. And, then we'll, and then we'll. And then we can just make sure we'll that bring, we understand what's in it, and that would then. Well, we have both Carrie and Michael in at the same time. Yeah. Carrie yeah. can go through it. Michael's sitting there listening. Mm -hmm. And yeah. Stephanie, if you can't get right. Carrie and Stephanie, Stephanie are kind of interchangeable. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's okay. Cool. Well yeah. done. Excellent. So that worked for that you, John. Perfect. We'll yes. hold your amendment. Yeah. No, it, it, that it we was, might do a letter might be more beneficial agreed. than. Mm -hmm. Than. I like you know. sticking it to the man, but well, I'm okay with I was I'm okay with playing nice today. For now. Just yeah. Just for now. Yeah, there is. But no, thank you guys. Um, uh, very productive, and uh, I thank this committee for its help on all the hemp legislation. This is uh, not that there's not still some bumps in the road we're going to have to keep adjusting as we as we move forward but uh, there's been huge investment and i believe there's huge potential for helping out rural vermont and rural america with this hemp program if the usda doesn't screw it up on us is that uh, have you talked to a lot of supplier growers that are somewhat happy or oh uh, they're happy with our program they're not happy with the usda people are literally freaking out about this USDA proposal. Um, and the, there's still an awful lot of people sitting on their product uh, because of the bottleneck with processors, and that's another thing. No processor is going to invest in new equipment because they see this USDA thing coming down the pipe. There's no reason to invest anymore right now. So that's another big problem. Mm -hmm. Um, and there are still some horror stories that we're going to hear. We heard about the one guy got locked up for not paying, and I don't think that's the biggest one that we're going to hear about. I think there's another. That was Arizona. Bigger one coming down the pike. No, the CBD Vermont guy. Oh. It wasn't. He contracted with people. They grew for him, and he didn't pay him. Oh, okay. Oh. <laughs> but there's a guy that contracted about a thousand acres around the state of Vermont and told all his growers to round bale it and wrap it in plastic. And I think it's going to be mush. Mm. Is that the guy that wanted to use the prison? Uh, I don't know. I don't, no, I don't oh, yeah. think that's the same that's guy. That's going to be the guy Gladstone and Nelson and all those guys. All those guys grew for him, and they got those round bales are still sitting on the farm. And you can't, you well, can't wrap moist 
and it's green all bath. Bath. It's, it's not hay. Did, yeah. But didn't that guy, um, he just didn't pay the farmers, though, and that's why he got right. in trouble. Yep. Yep. So he was trying to screw. Why well, he got in trouble for lots of things. Lots of yeah. things. He yeah. was, yeah, he was not, I think he got behind on money and it yeah. went downhill. So, um, thank you. I, I guess we're all set. Uh, if you want to, you're welcome to come back when we get. Um, sure. Let, in, uh, yeah, here. let me know. I'd like to listen in anyway. Let me know when you schedule it. I'd be happy to come back. Yep. Way more fun in here than my morning. It is. Chris misses us, I'm sure. I Just be careful how you introduce yourself. Oh, you. Uh,